solar panels on boats and controllers. And we, our guest speaker is Nigel. As you can tell from my smile, it's 100% genuine and always a pleasure. Nigel, thanks for joining us here today. Oh, thank you, Jeff. And, awesome. Uh, we asked you awesome. we have a lot, lot to talk about. Yeah, there's, we do. Uh, there's been a raft of new technologies coming into the solar world in the last few years. And some of them as recently as last year, which have basically um, changed many of the prescriptions we've used for recommending panels on solar panels on boats. So it's a really good time to be talking solar. So obviously it sounds that like there's a lot of alignment in the industry and now especially, you know, there's enough of us have heard uh, great stories about solar from our friends and fellow boaters uh, who've installed. So it's not an early adopter anymore. Uh, definitely not. So let's talk about one of the dilemmas that some, especially sailors, I mean, this is not something in the power boats, but for the sailboaters out there listening, the question is, oh, wind, solar, both? You want to weigh in on that a little bit, Nigel, um, sure. on um, your thoughts about maybe even prioritization. How do you go about choosing? You're going to choose well, one or should you do both? What's your thought on doing solar versus wind or doing both in what order? Well, we've always had a, a wind generator. Um, and there are times when it's really been useful. Uh, mostly, I'd say, when we spent quite a few years cruising in the Caribbean. And there's a lot of anchorages there where you're behind a reef. So there's no landmass in front of you, mm -hmm. and it's calm, and you've got a 15 knot trade wind coming up over the top of the reef. And in those conditions, the wind generator will really pump out some energy. But the vast majority of the time, uh, we're all anchored in some protected anchorage, and there's not a whole lot of wind. By definition, that's the whole point of the anchorage, is to provide protection. And the wind generator is not doing much. And so, uh, I think I mentioned this in our last discussion. In, in three summers on the west coast of Scotland, where we had an average of a gale a week, our 340 watts of solar uh, outperformed our wind generator two to one, in spite of the fact the sun almost never shone uh, and we had all of this wind. But most of the time, we were hiding from gales in protected anchorages, so the wind generator wasn't doing that much. And even though there wasn't much sun, you know, that you're at 60 degrees north there in the summertime, you've got 18 hours of daylight. So the, the solar was still outperforming the wind generator two to one. Same challenge here in the Pacific Northwest uh, with these giant, you know, sort of uh, out of the world trees that are 200, 300 feet tall surrounding your anchorages. And I know it sounds like an exaggeration, but the trees here are just absolutely- Oh, I've, we've, I've seen them. They're just, they're, they're, just, they're just out of this world. I mean, these are trees yeah. that nobody's even talking about. Back east, it would be, you know, almost everybody would just come to see the, the, the single tree. Yes. Uh, on the eastern <laughs> seaboard, there's, there's this, yeah. I mean, the anchorages here in the Pacific Northwest are absolutely bomb-proof, the majority of them. Uh, and you're right. The, the problem is it could be even more than 30 outside, 35, and the anchorage might just see gusts of 10, maybe sometimes 15. But most of the time, a lot of the anchorages, they're just so tight that you're just not getting that wind coming in, right? And that's exactly what you said. You know, the anchorages, you're going there to be protected to not have a big chop in the bay or in the cove or wherever it is. And so um, it depends where you're going, I think, with wind. Um, here in the so, Pacific yeah, Northwest, yeah. we recommend solar first. And then again, if you're going offshore, of course, if you're sailing, it makes sense. Uh, it's certainly something to consider, but I don't think wind, I give it a generic boat, probably start with solar and then supplement with wind if mm -hmm. it makes sense, depending on where you were cruising and if you're going offshore. And um, even if you've got a decent uh, breeze in the anchorage, if there's any boat motion at all, it uh, really knocks the heck out of the average output of a wind generator. Because all of those, those output numbers are collected in a wind tunnel, you know, or actually, if it's a low budget outfit, they'll uh, put the wind generator on the back of a pickup truck and drive it down the road at 40 miles an hour. But um, uh, either way, it's a, it's a steady state. Wind, yeah. uh, the minute you put that same wind generator on the boat and the boat's doing any rocking and rolling whatsoever, it cripples the output of the wind generator. So, All right. so you never get out of them, even if, if the wind is blowing, you know, steady 15 knots, you're still not gonna get uh, a 15 knots wind output out of that wind generator. It's gonna be su substantially below that because of any motion that's going on with the boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, some wind generators are unfortunately quite loud and uh so much some no, i mean it used to be the first uh, uh air 
what was it originally, the Air Marine wind generator we had, where they, they designed the blades to flutter at 25 knots to stall them out. And uh, the first time that happened, we, we had a squall coming through. We were at the Dry Tortugas at the end of the Florida Keys, and the squall came through. And all of a sudden, uh, the, the wind generator went into this flutter mode, and we, we'd never heard it before. And it was like a howling banshee. You could, and we thought something was tearing apart on the boat. You know, we're running, what the hell is that? It was just unbelievable noise those things made. Well, they don't do that anymore. They, they, uh, they got a lot of customer feedback on that issue. So uh, they've solved a lot of those noise issues. But the, the other thing you get on, if they're not well mounted, is quite a bit of vibration down through the deck. Mm. That can be more annoying than the noise from the blades. Because yeah. that can propagate right the way through the boat. Yeah, the harmonics. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. And that's and that has to be the beauty of solar, right? The beauty of solar is it's there in the background. You don't feel it. You don't sense it. It's completely doing its thing without vibration, without smoke, without noise. It's not bothering your neighbors, especially if you're in a cove with a lot of sailors that are, you know, it's trying to escape the noise or going there for peace and quiet. You know, solar doesn't bother anyone. It doesn't bother anybody on the boat. It doesn't bother anybody around. And that I think is, I have boat owners actually um, where one of the boat owners is saying, you know what? I don't like running my generator as much. I don't like bothering other boaters. Sure, I've got a big gen. And some boaters have a 20 kilowatt, 8 kilowatt, 12 kilowatt. And like, help me reduce my generator runtime so that when I'm in an anchorage, I can recharge my batteries as much as possible without having to run the generator so that I don't get those side glances from the boaters around me that are thinking that we're disturbing the peace. And so solar is, you know, there's not a lot of pain other than upfront costs with solar. It's mm -hmm. everything is upfront. It's, it's a little harder than, you know, most people, you know, they never say, oh my God, it's a lot cheaper than I thought. It's always, okay, it's more than I thought, but the benefits are just out there. They're just amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, if you found this video interesting, please subscribe. Um, it honestly it does, it does help us to know that all this time that we're investing is actually, we're reaching a lot of voters. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Thanks for spending some time with me.